All right, today our lesson is on placing the first digit. This is where you have to decide using place value where you're going to place the first digit in your quotient. So we're going to go through a few steps to learn how to do that. Let's read the problem that they give us to start. Jamie took 144 photos on a digital camera. The photos are to be placed equally in six photo albums. How many photos will be in each album? So as always, let's go ahead and highlight. Instead of doing the underlining portion, we'll highlight it. Read the question with me. How many photos will be in each album? You can tell me the numbers that we're going to need to use in our problem. Read in. 144. Okay, what else? And the six photo albums. So we have a total of 144 photos, and we need to place them equally in six photo albums. So we are going to divide 144 and six. So step one says to use place value to place the first digit. You're going to look at the hundreds and 144. As you can see, they drew a picture over here of 144 base 10 blocks. See it? It says 100 cannot be shared among six groups without regrouping. So they have to regroup the 100 as 10, 10. So they're taking this, as you can see that is, they have little dotted lines around it. They took this and they made it into what? 10, 10. So now I have how many total 10s to share? I have the 10 here, plus I also have the four up here for a total of, so they have 14 tens to share among six groups. That means the first digit of the quotient will be in which place? Is it in the hundreds if I had to break this up? Nope, so it's got to be in which place? The tens place. So if you had to break the 100 up, you cannot place your particular quotient in that particular spot. So as you look here on step two, did they place the two above the one? No, because you know that six does not go into one, but you do know that six will go into 14. Does that make sense? So when you're placing your digit, you're going to place it up top. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the 14 tens that we had up here in the picture by the six groups. How many times can I do that? Two. So see where they placed it? It's not in the hundreds place. It is in the 10, so they placed it above the 4. So what is 6 times 2? 12. 12. So I'm going to bring that down here below the 14. Then I'm going to subtract 14 minus 12. 2. Okay, 2, which has also been 14 tens minus 12 tens, which is what you're looking at in your picture up here. Okay, then we're going to check to make sure that two tens cannot be shared among six groups without regrouping, correct? Mm -hmm. So then I have to bring down what? The four. the four. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to bring it down here. I'm going to do it down here in step three. Does that make sense? Okay. So I want to make sure that I can't do this by itself, and then when I bring it down, I will be able to. So now I'm going to divide the ones because we just divided the tens. We're going to regroup the two tens as 21s. So they would have taken those and divided them up. Now they don't have the picture drawn anymore. They just leave it up here. Okay, so you would have to know that you'd have to do that on your own. So how many ones then would be shared? A total of 24, because we're putting it both down here. The 20 that was from the 4, and the 4 we bring down will be the 24 ones to share among the six groups. So that means I'm going to divide what? What's my division problem going to look like here? I'm using this number, right? So I'm going to have... 24 ones divided by the 6 again. Okay, so what do I know about 24 and 6? What number times 6 gets me 24 or as close to it as I can get? Can it end? The 4. See how they placed it up here already? So 4 times 6 is 24, so I'm going to put it here. So I multiply the 6 and the 4 ones. You know, we're filling all this in over here. Now, when you do your own division, you're not going to have to fill in all this information. Right now, they're just wanting you to make sure you can follow the steps. So now I'm going to subtract 24 ones, which was there, right? 
and the 24 ones. And what do I get? So I need you to put a zero down here. So I did get to zero with no remainder. So how many photos will be in each album? 24. So the other, last week we were doing where we could divide in the very first place. Okay, now we have to look and know where to place our first digit in the quotient. Because the other day, we were doing only this stuff. But if you look, 6 isn't divisible by 1, is it? So I have to go over. So I have to make sure I know what I'm doing and where I'm going to place that first digit. Because I can't put it in the hundreds place if I can't do that division problem. Any questions on this so far? All right, let's turn the page. Let's try a different one. They gave you the problem 287 divided by 2 already at the top, but let's read. Reggie has 287 photographs of animals. If he wants to put the photos into two groups of the same size, how many photos will be in each group? So if you highlight the question, how many photos will be in each group? And if you're using the numbers they had in the division problem, you would see that it is 287 photographs of the animals, and they want to put them in how many groups? Two. Two. So again, we're going to use place value to place the first digit. We're going to look at the hundreds in 287. Two hundreds can be shared this time between two groups, right? Okay. So if I'm looking at that, I know then that my first digit of my quotient will be placed where? Which place value? We placed it in the tens the last time because it was not divisible by the hundreds. This time the two is divisible by the two, so what place am I going to put it in, Cheyenne? The hundreds place. Because it does work this time. So see how one time you may have to go to the tens, and the next time you may be able to stay at the hundreds. So you're going to write hundreds place in there. Always have to look to see if your numbers are divisible by each other. All right, then we're going to work our way down to step two, and we're actually going to do the division. So we're going to do the hundreds place like she told us to start with. So how many times does two go into two? I put the 1 up top, so I'm then going to do the multiplication, which is 2 times 100, which gives me <coughs> 2, so put it in there. Then I'm going to subtract 2 hundreds minus 2 hundreds, which gives me 0 hundreds. Now as I look there, am I allowed to do 2 into 0? So no, now I have to do what? I have to bring that down, don't I? So let's go ahead and bring that on down. So now I'm going to be dividing the eight tens by the two tens. And as we know, how many times will that happen? They put the four up there for you. Now remember, they're not going to do this all for you. You're going to have to remember what to do. So eight divided by two is four, so they put it up here. That means we're going to do the multiplication then, which is two times four. And what do I get? Eight. Then as always, we're going to subtract. I'm subtracting what? Who can tell me? 8 tens minus 8 tens, and I get 0. So there are 0 tens left over. Go on to step 4, which is to the side this time. I'm not finished because how many numbers do I still have left up here? The 1. I need to bring that 7 down, right? Okay. So what am I dividing this time? What do I have here? 7 ones divided by... 2, still going to divide by 2 because that's my divisor, right? It doesn't change. Okay, so when we're doing that, we want to figure out what number times 2 will get me close to 7. So I'm going to take what? 2 times 3. 2 times 3. What is 2 times 3? 6. So I'll put that here. What am I subtracting? 7 ones minus 6 ones. And what do I get? One. one. Now, as you can see, we know that one cannot be equally shared between two groups. So what am I going to end up with? 
remainder. the remainder of 1. And they had already written that stuff for you, right? They're not going to do that. They're going to give you the problem that looks just like this, and they're going to tell you to subtract. So you're going to have to know whether I'm going to end up with a remainder or I'm not going to end up with a remainder. So how many photos would be in each group with one photo left over? What's up here? 143. This last one, we didn't have to put that 3 up here. We still multiply 2 times 3, but we did not have to write it. They wrote it for us. So it is 143 photos in each group, and there will be one left over that does not go in the group. Okay. Does everybody kind of see how I know where to place my digit? If I can divide in the hundreds, I'm going to place it in the hundreds. If I can't divide in the hundreds, where am I going to place it? Yes. In the tens. Okay. What if I couldn't place it in the tens? One. I'm going to go to the ones. So you just keep working your way over until you are able to do the division. All right, turn your page again, please. Let's try a few of these out. Now, this first one kind of gives you all of the steps over here. And then after that, what do you see? You're on your own, right? Okay, so here's one last chance for you to get this in the correct places. Let's read the problem. There are 452 pictures of dogs in four equal groups. How many pictures are in each group? Explain how you can use place value to place the first digit in the quotient. Let's go ahead and highlight first. Our question was... How many pictures are in each group? What are the numbers I'm going to use? Tristan, can you tell me the numbers I'm going to use in my problem, please? Speak up so we can hear you. 452. And what? Four for the number of equal groups. And as you can see over here on the right, I went ahead and wrote that for you. I'm going to, we're going to figure that and then we will do the explanation. How's that sound? We'll do the math and then we'll come over and I do the explanation. Okay, so watch what you're doing when we're doing this. So, looking at the problem, who thinks they can tell me where I'm going to place my first digit in my quotient? Am I going to place it in the hundreds place? And I'm going to place it in the tens? Am I going to place it in the ones? Where am I going to place it? This is what you're supposed to be thinking about every time you look at a problem. Mackenzie, can you tell me which place I'm going to be placing it? Okay, can you tell me why I'm going to place it in the hundreds? Very good. Does everybody see that? She says we're going to place it in the hundreds place because 4 is divisible by 4. Okay. If it was not divisible by 4, would you be able to start there? No. So, how many times does 4 go into 4? One. 1. So go ahead and put your 1 up here, please. And as always, we're going to divide, multiply, subtract. Say it with me. Divide, multiply, subtract. Again, divide, multiply, subtract. That's the order in which you're going to do this. Okay? So uh, it's time for me to multiply. I'm multiplying 4 times 1. What do I get? 4. So I'm going to put it here. Now what step am I ready for? I divided, I multiplied, and I'm ready to subtract. So 4 minus 4? Zero. 0. Okay, now what do I have to do? Can I just leave it with zero right there? Fred, what am I going to do? Bring down the five. So I'm going to do that. And then we're ready to start our lovely three steps again. So I'm going to divide. How many times does four go into five? One. One again. I need to multiply. Four times one. Four. Four. Four times one is four. Ready to subtract. So five minus four. One. One. I leave it like that. No. What else do I have to do here? Bring down the two. Good. Bring down the two. So my next step would be what? So dividing 12 and 4? Three. Three. So multiplying 3 times 4 gives me? 12. So I put it in here. Ready to do what? Subtract 12. Subtract 12 minus 12 to get? So do I have a remainder in this problem? No. no. My answer is 113. Now, we can't forget, we had to explain how we can use place value to place the first digit in the quotient. And it's kind of what Mackenzie told us before we even started. 
We know that four hundredths can be divided by